Hey everyone, it's that time of the week again. Let's talk about what's Scrobbling. So if you don't know what Scrobbling is, it's basically where Last.fm looks at your listening history over uh, whatever sort of time period you want. I hope you guys have had a good week. Let's uh, just jump right in and see what's been the top Scrobbled uh, artist this week. Although I do want to note, uh, what do you guys want me to do with this segment? I'm getting to a point where I'm not entirely sure if I'm happy with it. I've, I've noticed there's a lot of artists that uh, pop up every now and then, and I don't really want to talk about the same artists every week. And so uh, what do you guys think I should do with it? Should I just go ahead and talk about these artists anyway, or should I just sort of gloss over them? Let me know what you think. Without further ado, let's get into this week's top Scrabble artists. We're going to omit King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard this week because uh, it's always making its way into the list, and I feel like I've talked about it enough. So uh, with that in mind... Let's talk about Clipping. So Clipping is an experimental hip hop group and they recently released a track called The Deep for a segment on NPR. And I love this track. It's so interesting because it starts off very uh, minimal, but uh, David Diggs, who is the uh, main vocalist for Clipping, does this very uh, articulate and very fast paced rap. And what makes it so interesting to me is that I'm more focused on the lyrical content and what David is saying then I am focused on the beats, which is my M.O. when it comes to hip-hop and rap. I would much rather listen to something with a cool beat than uh, focus more on the vocal delivery. But there's something extremely compelling about David's vocal delivery that draws me to that. So I've been listening to The Deep a lot. I've also been listening to his EP Wriggle, which has some really, really sweet tracks. I'm not a huge fan of the more abrasive uh, experimental well, noise stuff that from like his uh, debut album. I feel like it, it, it's an interesting experiment. It's just not really something that I look for in music. Like there's a track that where the entire uh, the entire beat of the track is this alarm going off and by the end of it it gets pretty grating. But yeah, definitely give Clipping a listen because they're a fantastic hip hop band. All right, next up on our list is Portrait. So Portrait are a Swedish band that uh, follow in the same sort of footsteps as bands like King Diamond and Merciful Fate. They pull a lot of influences from these classic heavy metal artists, uh, especially King Diamond, as is very clear with the vocal delivery and the sort of type of music that they do. They sort of started off as a King Diamond uh, like worship band, but they have started to evolve their sound a little more recently. And their new album, Burn the World, is freaking awesome. Uh, there's some really, really menacing and sinister guitar riffs and uh, some really menacing uh, vocal delivery. And that seems to be the main focus of this release is um, just getting this ridiculous vocal delivery. It, he's always doing this really high-pitched shriek. And uh, it's very similar to a mix between King Diamond and Tobias Samet from Egg Guy. It was like the first sort of thing that came to mind. But it's definitely worth a listen if you're a fan of uh, classic heavy metal or King Diamond especially. It's a, it's a pretty sweet album. I recommend it. Next we have the Hirsch Effect, which are a German band who play this uh, style of like melodic uh, mathcore sort of music. And I've been spinning their new album, uh, Escapist, a lot recently. And that album's a lot of fun. It's a nice mix between this really, really crazy and intense technical metalcore, mathcore, but it also has several segments that are much more uh, melodic and uh, sort of laid back, especially compared to the more crazy segments. And honestly, I think I would have liked it better if they had focused more on the more intense uh, crazy segments instead of putting so much more emphasis on the melodic parts, but it's still a very enjoyable release either way, and I definitely recommend it. Next we have Pariahs who are a Pennsylvania melodic death metal band in the same sort of vein as bands like Illustrium and Lore and Horrendous. They're all a part of that same sort of Philadelphia area uh, metal scene. And they're a pretty sweet band as well. They play this uh, sort of typical style of melodic death metal, but they also include some uh, orchestrations to add a bit of drama. And on their latest EP, uh, it's relatively short, but it's performed really well. And the what I, my favorite part of it is the vocal delivery. And so I'm probably going to uh, put that in a review sometime later this week. I have a lot of things I want to review. And so uh, I'm going to try and make time for that one as well, because this is a pretty cool release. 
Next up, we have Leprous. So I know that I talked about Leprous last week, but they just released a new album called Melina, and uh, I'm planning on reviewing that as well. It's pretty cool. Like, it's not bad. It doesn't wow me as much as Cole or uh, Bilateral did, but it still feels like there's something cool there. It just doesn't feel as uh, musically dense as albums like Cole did. But I think I just need to give it more time and sort of let it sink in, and I'll probably like it around as much as those ones as well. Uh, the delivery is a little bit different. It's a lot more focused on melodicism and really uh, catchy choruses as opposed to, uh, you know, colon bilateral. They were much more focused on doing, like, weird progressive stuff and a lot more abrasive and intense m passages. But there are much less intense passages on this album, which is fine. I, I'm a fan of it. Next, we have Queens of the Stone Age. And so they just released an album as well called Villains. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it yet. I've never been a big fan of Queens of the Stone Age, but I was told to check it out and see what I thought of it. And, uh, I don't know, like, a couple of tracks were pretty interesting to me, but I'm not entirely sure that I'm sold on the whole album, at least. Although I do want to go back and look at the rest of their discography and sort of see how it plays itself against that, because there are a large diversity of tracks on this album. And so I'm wondering if they stuck to a more straightforward style on their previous albums and they're branching out a lot more here. I have no idea. So I'm going to try and figure that out this week, and possibly do a review of that if I have the time. Next we have an Autumn for Crippled Children, who are a sort of Alcest-style, uh, shoegazy type band. And when I first heard them, I wasn't particularly crazy about them because of the way the production was made and sort of where the vocals were layered in it. I had that same sort of problem when I first listened to Death Heaven. But I've come around to it, and I really like what they do. I think it's very pleasant, and it's very nice. And uh, I think that, uh, I believe the album that I listened to, oh, it's called Try Not to Destroy Everything You Love. And I'm a, I'm a fan of it. I didn't get to listen to it too terribly much, but I definitely want to go back and revisit it and revisit the rest of their discography because I'm a big fan of this style of post-black metal. Next up, we have Dead Lord. They also released an album this week. Uh, they also play a style of a more classic heavy metal. And it's pretty sweet if you can tolerate the vocals because they're a little idiosyncratic and they are definitely not uh, for everyone. I can imagine these vocals being very polarizing. So I would suggest you give it a listen and see what you think. There is one single out right now. I think it's uh, I think it's called Too Late and it's another pretty sweet release this week. It's just pretty amazing how this uh, new wave of uh, all these uh, traditional heavy metal bands are coming around. You have bands like Summerlands and Spellcaster and Portrait and Dead Lord, all releasing cool music around this time. Oh, and Gygax. I'm excited for uh, Gygax's new album. Uh, they were sort of throwing rumors around that they were going to release something new, and I'm a big fan of their uh, music too. Even though it's more in the realm of rock than I would consider it in the realm of metal, it's still really fun to listen to, and I love how the, it revolves around the theme of Dungeons & Dragons. But yeah, definitely give this uh, Dead Lord album a check out. Because it's got some pretty, uh, it's got some pretty cool riffs. It's got some nice drum work, and uh, the production is really, really nice as well. And I'm also a fan of the vocals, although uh, it was much nicer listening to it as a single than listening to it as a whole album. Uh, whenever I listened to it as a whole album, it uh, it was just kind of meh by the end of it. It wasn't like too grating or anything, but I expected to like the vocals more over an entire listen. And finally for this segment, we have Piron, who are a totally crazy uh, death metal band. They kind of remind me of if the Dillinger Escape Plan were more deeply rooted in death metal. And they just released a new album, I think it was uh, like last week or so, called What Passes for Survival. And this is like an insanely dense album. And I feel like there's a lot to it that I haven't discovered yet. And so I'm going to try and give this one more listens and see what all I can figure out about it. I do like the just constant intensity and the dissonance and just how ridiculous and crazy it sounds. And I've also heard that some of their lyrics are like some of the best in metal in general. And so it'll be cool to sort of dive deeper into the lyrics and see what they have in store. So I would give this one a listen if you're into more experimental and more dissonant and more aggressive styles of metal. Alright, I think that's going to be it for this segment. Uh, thanks for listening. 
And uh, let me know if I missed anything this week or if there's anything you want me to check out or anything like that. Thanks for listening, guys. I'll see you guys next time.